everything is absurd on today's episode, just some good old-fashioned internet tomfoolery that is ripe for mocking. And of course, we're going to have to start out with the surefire way that Donald Trump is going to offset all those losses from the civil fraud trial in New York City, which, by the way, added up to $350 million plus interest. And that interest is so far estimated to be around $100 million. So, yeah, that brings the amount that he currently owes people to over half a billion dollars if you include the judgment from the E. Jean Carroll defamation lawsuit. And that's a lot of money. We covered all of this on the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News, so if you need to get caught up, you should probably start there. But with Trump currently facing half a billion dollars in losses, he's going to have to find a pretty creative way to start bringing in lots of cash real quick. Yeah, and do it in a relatable way. Yeah. We've all been there. Yeah, one that everyone can get behind yeah. and support. So yeah, luckily he's had the perfect product waiting in the wings for just such an occasion. Something much better than his other failed endeavors like... Trump Steaks, Trump University, Trump Vodka, Trump Water, and Trump Cologne, among countless others. Yeah. What is this new miracle product that's going to launch Trump back to the top of the Forbes 100 list? Here, have a look. Wow. A lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion in this room. Thank you. Thank you. So, so the really nice thing is we have lines. Check out these Trump ones. $400 retail on these. Check these out. Check the box too. It says Trump, that friends and family. Then when you open it, it comes with like a gold wrapping paper. Check these. These are crazy. He's a sneakerhead. He is. He is. Damn, what are those? Uh, those are the, <laughs> the Freedom and Liberty 500s. Uh, no, folks. Yeah, Donald Trump is tapping into the one lucrative market he has failed to really take over yet, and that's sneakerheads. Because as you just saw, Trump officially launched his own brand of sneakers during a surprise visit to SneakerCon in Philadelphia, where he was met with an absolute cacophony of boos from the crowd. Oh, I don't know, a lot of emotion in here tonight. Uh -huh. uh, thought this was going to go a little bit better. So the shoes themselves, which obviously seem like cheap knockoffs of something similar to an Air Jordan, but with gold adorning nearly every inch of them. They're officially called the Never Surrender High Tops. It's the official name. But of course, people on social media have taken to calling them the Jail Force Ones or the January Sixers. That's good. The sneakers are, or were, available on one of Trump's many web stores for the low, low price of $399. But unfortunately for everyone who was dying to pick up a pair of these bad boys, the initial run has already sold out. Whatever Damn. that means. Keep your eye on Stock X. I want to see how high these go. Yeah. Now, according to the horrifically ugly website created for the shoes that Homelander would love, yeah. they were limited to 1,000 pairs, with some being autographed by Trump himself. The site also offers some cheaper pairs of Trump shoes, coming in at around $200. Alongside some newly developed cologne and perfume called Victory 47, in anticipation of him winning the 2024 election. Mm -hmm. The cologne bottle literally has a gold bust of the president's head as the cap. Yeah. All these products and the web store where they exist are clearly the signs of someone who is not only presidential, but who is definitely not desperate for money in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, why would a desperate man do this? Weren't they, didn't they, his fans put together a, a GoFundMe for him as well? Yeah, for uh, to offset those losses. Yeah, and they were getting up in the tens of thousands, so, you know, every little bit helps. I guess, in the sense that these people are now completely broke. I guess it works. Give Donald that money. He needs He'll it. He'll spend it better than you will. Uh -huh. But back to the shoes. Here's how they are described on the storefront. They're for the go-getters who don't know the word quit. With a standout gold finish and the T badge, these kicks are for true patriots. Wrapped with an American flag on the collar, they shout out to the brave and the free. The Never Surrender sneakers are your rally cry in shoe form. Lace up and step out ready to conquer. Again, flag code would say that this is actually not patriotic, but also, uh, man, if only this was timed better because you know there would have been so many of these things on January 6th. Yeah, I mean, it's if he really wanted to, like, make this work, going for the streetwear thing, That's I think that's a mistake. He They need to be some new balances with thick Velcro straps. Yeah, or like those Skechers slip-ins. 
Yeah. You don't got to bend over to get in these shoes. This is a young man's shoe. Yeah, or he could get like, uh, you know, some work boots. Lickable work boots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You lick the boot. Yeah. It's delicious, folks. Mm, tasty. Now, first of all, we, we hate to be the bearers of bad news, but there are some red flags with these products that will remind you of, I don't know, maybe something like the conservative dad's ultra-right anti-woke beer. Now, first off, there is absolutely no return policy. Mm -mm. The website clearly states that all sales are final. So no matter what you get, or when you get it, or if you get it, it's yours and there is no shot of getting your money back. Now moving on to when you would actually receive this product, if you were one of the lucky few who were able to pre-order the Never Surrender High Tops before they sold out, in the Frequently Asked Questions segment of the website, they state the following. Trump sneakers are expected to start shipping July 2024 for the gold high tops, and the POTUS 45 white knit and red wave knit are expected to ship in August 2024. Shipping and delivery dates are estimates only and cannot be guaranteed. Your order will ship as it becomes available, and we will make reasonable efforts to ship your order as quickly as possible. We cannot guarantee when an order will arrive. Consider any shipping or transit time offered to you by us only as an estimate. <laughs> okay. We encourage you to order in a timely fashion to avoid delays caused by shipping and or product availability. We will endeavor to charge you for all applicable sales taxes. However, it is your responsibility as the customer to report any purchases of tangible personal property that has not been taxed by us and pay the sales or use tax on those purchases unless exempt under applicable, applicable law. Wait, what? Yeah, a <laughs> little bit weird on the uh, end there. <laughs> We're gonna try to figure out how to do this whole tax thing, but as you are very aware, the, the Trump companies are not very good at, at doing all of their tax stuff, so yeah, just... It, I've never seen that before, that is interesting. Make sure you file these shoes on with your tax returns. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that tax bit on the end there seems a bit weird and out of place for something as straightforward as a shoe purchase, but... Oh well, that's for these people to deal with. Yes. Not my problem. <laughs> This drop was seen as a huge win by Trump loyalists who gave him a lot of credit for um, reaching out to the black community through the medium of sneakers. Yeah. No, that is literally what at least one commentator said during a Fox News segment about the shoes. Here, take a look. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers, they're into sneakers. They love the, you know, th this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. Okay. He, the blacks, the blacks love me. I got the shoes. The blacks love shoes and they love me. Donald Trump. The blacks. Yeah, he's, uh, and, and Fox to just go out, like repeat that as well. Is just bizarre. It, yeah, it, I mean, I, the, the, the ultimate, uh, the blacks love Trump moment was of course when he got arrested in Georgia. Yeah. And they posed that mugshot and he's like, I feel, I feel like this is gonna be really, really a turning point for Trump and the blacks because they love anyone who goes to prison for crimes. The mugshot has breathed new life into the Trump campaign and broadened his appeal to black Americans. Uh, then there was Tammy, Tommy Tammy Lirin, who was just blown away by Trump's business savvy and musing about how bad Joe Biden is at pushing his merch. But nobody merchandises like Donald Trump does. There is nobody who can move merch like Donald Trump. I've never seen any Joe Biden merchandise anywhere. Nikki Haley has tried it, she has failed. Donald Trump knows what he's doing. And if we wanna talk about connecting with young people, maybe not the worst idea in the world. But a quick reminder for Tammy, pushing cheap ass merchandise to make up for the various and growing judgments against you isn't exactly what any president or former president would do in order to uphold their image. Yeah, seems a bit weird. But meanwhile, the current Biden re-election communications director, Michael Tyler, took a shot at Trump after his appearance at SneakerCon, saying, Donald Trump showing up to hawk bootleg off-whites is the closest he'll get to any Air Force Ones ever again for the rest of his life. Damn, it's, got him. It's pretty funny, but there's also a part of us that worries about how true that statement will end up being. I mean, the, the birth of the Trump desperately trying to become president in the first place was when Obama talked shit straight to his face at the correspondence dinner. But by the way, the prototypes that Trump was showing off in person at the convention, they were purchased by the CEO of what's described as a gray market site <laughs> that sells luxury watches at discount prices. Also, people are there out there being like, this guy's he's a Russian CEO. Luxury watch, are they, are they, uh, are they authentic, these watches? Uh, 
Look, I have no idea. I would assume that they probably are, but the, the mm. reporting that I read said okay. that it, it, it does run afoul of the actual watchmakers because they don't have any kind of visibility into the goings on there. Mm. And it's just a resale thing for their watches. Okay. Regardless, this guy's being like talked about as if he's like a Russian oligarch. He was born in the Soviet Union mm. and came to America. None of that is relevant. The fact that he spent $9,000 on a pair of Trump shoes is yeah, that... the dumb move. Uh, so yeah, he paid $9,000 for the shoes, and Trump lovingly autographed those shoes, so they've got to be worth something, I guess. Um, anyways, Priceless. Uh, the guy overpaid for this garbage and had the whole internet making fun of him, so there you go. I personally can't wait to see the first person who steps out of their Cybertruck wearing these gold pieces of shit, because... The crossover is already there. We're already yeah. well aware of that. And that's, of course, if they actually ever get produced and have orders fulfilled, which we won't even know until at least July or August. Cutting it kind of close. Yeah. And we don't know. Maybe there's delays. Who knows? Well, you got to get the designs all the way over to China so yes. that they can, uh, they can make the shoes for mm -hmm. you. Anyway, there's also talk about how uh, the red soles of the shoes could get Trump in a little bit of legal trouble with luxury footwear company Louboutin because of the red soles. I feel like that's reading way too into this because, uh, correct us if we're wrong, but plenty of other shoes do have red on the bottoms, right? Like, there's definitely Nikes with red bottoms, right? Yeah. Have I just, I don't know. Who knows? At this point, who cares? The shoes might never actually even get produced. But it's hard to feel bad for any of the people who handed over their cash to Trump for yet another grift, especially at this point. Yeah, and also, so, so there are some people, like, I think putting too much thought into it, but maybe it's true, saying that they intentionally made the shoes to rip off as many other shoe brands as possible so they could get sued to stop them from actually producing and fulfilling the orders so that they could just take the money and run. That would be interesting. That would be the yeah. smartest possible thing, but yeah. I don't know if that's... Uh, yeah. But yeah, chances are you're not going to see these Trump sneakers being worn around by hype beasts anytime soon. No. And before we leave the Trump news behind for the day, we should probably bring up the fact that there was almost another trucker boycott because of Trump. Uh, this time it was going to be a boycott of New York City. New York City! One of the largest commercial hubs in the country. Yeah. As retribution for the $350 million judgment against Trump in that civil fraud trial there. Yeah, uh, I ain't delivering that freight to New York City. Uh, also, uh, in addition to this, which got, we'll get to, it got overturned because uh, the guy went viral and was like, oh God, I'm in trouble by <laughs> for saying that we're going to stop shipping goods to New York City. Uh -huh. uh, aside from that, uh, some very real consequences for the city of New York over this. Oh. Kid Rock and Jason Aldean have canceled their shows in New York City, not due to lack of ticket sales or interest, but because they support the for, for, former, current, and future president. What will the people of New York City do without Kid Rock? <laughs> yeah, good. They're just gonna be bored out of their minds over in New York. Nothing else. No to do. entertainment. Uh huh. Yeah, just twiddling their thumbs without Kid Rock and Jason Aldean coming to town. Yeah. Well, try that in a big town. Try that in a gigantic town. <laughs> try that in a big app. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, though, the truck driver who called for that boycott uh, might have fucked around a little too much and then found out very, very quickly that the companies that he and others drive for would not be very happy to have a few of their shipments delayed because some of the drivers are throwing hissy fit over the president's many crimes. So, yeah, just as quickly as the trucker known as... Chicago Ray went viral. He also deleted his posts and offered an update claiming that uh, he was just goofing around and he promises that he and his imaginary friends are not going to attempt to bring the economy to a halt by refusing to enter New York City. In his first video post, which has since been deleted, Chicago Ray stated, I've been on the radio talking to drivers for the last hour. I've talked to at least 10 drivers. They're gonna start refusing loads. <laughs> They're going to start refusing loads going to NYC starting Monday. I got three drivers I drive with. They already told the boss they ain't going to NYC. I tell you what, you fuck around and find out. We're tired of you MFing leftists fucking with Trump. Our bosses ain't going to care if we deny the load. Leave Trump the fuck alone with the bullshit. You know you ain't got shit on Trump, so cut the bullshit. It's election interference. Uh, no loads for this guy. <laughs> yeah, no loads refused. 
Uh, shortly after that video went viral, he deleted it from his profile and posted a lengthy non-apology apology where he talks about how he let his emotions get out of hand. I'm sorry, I will not be refusing any loads. No. All loads Does this look like the face of a guy who refused a load? No! I take every load I can get my hands every on. Every load that comes my way, I yeah. take it. Yep, me and all my buddies here. Straight up, we, uh, oh my gosh. We're lining up for those loads. <laughs> Give me the loads. I don't care. NYC, San Francisco, Los Angeles, I'll take any load I Let can get. Let me pop that back door open. You can fill that truck up. Fill, I just give me the entire load. Mm -hmm. Load it up. That's right. Realistically, oh, and by the way, like this guy wasn't even taking a load to New York City. He was like, he's like, actually, I'm up or operating in Milwaukee or Wisconsin. We'll get to it. But wasn't even going there. It was just all this just per more performative shit. Mm. But yes, realistically, it was the consequences of his own actions because the companies that he hauls for probably got a little upset about his make-believe protest. They're just like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> One of our biggest fucking hubs isn't going to get its loads? Uh, here's the post from the same weekend. Just to be clear, I'm no figurehead of any movement. I'm not leading, nor have I encouraged, or am I encouraging anyone to do anything other than what they were doing prior to the ruling on Friday in New York City. I'm just a trucker who heard chatter and posted it on Twitter. Nothing more than that. I've been asked to go on several podcasts, as well as a GoFundMe, which I have declined and will continue to decline. There's good people in NYC. I've got family there. There's a lot of people who have nothing to do with this that could be harmed. We're truckers. We do what we do. We work through the pandemic. Let's keep goods and services flowing as scheduled. No loads refused. Absolutely not. I will take any load you've got. Mm -hmm. The bigger, the better. Yeah. Fill me up. So yeah, the fucking god of trucking must have driven down from trucker heaven to deliver a strong enough message to Chicago Ray to elicit that level of response just a day after he went viral for incomprehensibly screaming into his cell phone. Yeah. So and there you go. I guess it all worked out. Well, and, and you know, most of those truckers are busy down in Eagle Pass anyway. That's right. Baptizing. Protecting the border, getting baptized. Yeah. Uh, getting from, into petty arguments with other members of their from what I From what I hear, uh, now just sort of wandering through the Southwest, harassing anyone who seems vaguely Mexican. Yeah. Um, and filming it. Mm hmm So. That's, At least they're filming their crimes. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. I guess. Anyways, we do have one more little political side note to get to for now, because um, folks... Somehow George Santos returned to the news cycle. Yeah. A few months back, he was inescapable. He had been kicked out of Congress. He was selling subscriptions to his tweets and personalized videos on Cameo. And he was even making appearances on wildly popular interview shows. But then he let his one weakness slip. He gave it all up out loud. If you stop giving him attention, he'll go away. He admitted. And with the natural news cycle only lasting a few days at this point, it wasn't long before the entire world kind of forgot about George Santos, and then you started hearing about him less and less. And yeah. Hey, remember George Santos? That Who? was a that was a thing from the past. The congressman. Uh, yeah, this is a this was a completely natural lull in the news cycle between his getting expelled, his cameos, and then the eventual criminal trial. Which, when, then we would start hearing about him more. Right. Than. But he is back in the news again. In February of all George of all Santos, months. the dog thief? <laughs> the guy who ripped off the Amish? And he is, uh, it's almost certainly as a response to his dwindling popularity. And his popularity online is the only thing that is currently paying his bills. So he is almost certainly going broke before his criminal trial is even set to begin. So he is throwing a desperate Hail Mary and has filed a lawsuit against Jimmy Kimmel for tricking George Santos into making videos for his late night talk show on ABC. Here's CNN with more on this lawsuit that will almost certainly fail and in doing so extinguish whatever is left of George Santos's bank account. Great time to be a lawyer. It is a great time for law. Former representative George Santos sued late night host Jimmy Kimmel for deceiving him into creating cameo videos and then improperly broadcasting them on his show, according to court documents. Defendants openly admitted to deceiving the plaintiff under the guise of fandom, soliciting personalized videos only to then broadcast these on national television and across social media channels for commercial gain. Actions that starkly violate the original agreement and constitute clear copyright infringement, the civil lawsuit said. The lawsuit, filed Saturday in the Southern District of New York, alleges copyright infringement, fraudulent inducement, breach of contract, and unjust enrichment. 
ABC, which produces Kimmel's show, and its parent company, Disney, are also named as defendants. Defendant Kimmel misrepresented himself and his motives to induce plaintiff to create personalized videos for the sole purpose of capitalizing on and ridiculing plaintiff's gregarious personality, <laughs> the lawsuit said. Kimmel not only boasted about intentionally deceiving plaintiff, but played on the comedic irony of possibly getting sued by plaintiff for fraud, claiming that it would be a dream come true. Santos is requesting a jury trial. He's seeking at least $150,000 in statutory damages for each infringement, in addition to other unspecified damages to be determined at trial. He's also requesting injunctions to stop the defendants from infringing on his copyrights. He's, he's just a gregarious guy, and yeah. that Jimmy Kimmel came along and decided to take advantage of that. Yeah, in a way that uh, somehow passed through the checks and balances of the Disney Corporation uh, before it was broadcast. Uh, also, almost certainly falling under uh, fair use. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I feel like the, the, the whole joke cameo thing, that is, that's a meme that has yeah. ex existed as long as cameo has. Yeah. I feel like someone would have sued someone else over this if there was any legal merit to it. Yeah, also it's like pretty hazy in between, uh, between who actually owns the videos because yeah. they are made for someone who paid for them. They, the site is like an intermediary which hosts it all. Mm. And then there's the creator themselves. So it is, uh, yeah, maybe we'll all get to see under the hood. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. But yeah, I guess it was a blessing in disguise that he never fulfilled our request for a video. <laughs> <Thank Woo! you. laughs> I don't want to hire any lawyers, goddamn. Yeah. Uh, we don't think he really has a shot in hell at winning this or any other lawsuit related to this, but getting sued, it's a pain in the ass, mm -hmm. even if there's not really any merit to it. Yeah. All right, we do have more to get to today, including this year's version of Bean Dad. Oh, God. And what might be the king of weird online guys so far this year, even beating out the naked bass pro shop swimmer and the guy who got stuck in a decorative urn. But first, we have to take a second to uh, thank today's sponsor, Shopify. You probably already know them. You probably already love them. It's Shopify, the best platform for shopping, hosting your business, and keeping track of all your shipments in one place. There's a ton of amazing duos out there in the world, and we're a perfect example, but the best duo is, of course, Shopify and you. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. No matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. We love Shopify's simple and easy to use app because it keeps track of all your online shipments. You can even connect other platforms so that your tracking is all in one place. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's and Brooklinen and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash itdaily, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash itdaily now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash itdaily, or click down below. Okay, back to the news with one of this year's most incredible online main characters, the absent father who loves breakdancing and Bitcoin. Yeah, he's got it all. Obviously, it's hard to top, you know, the guy who got himself stuck in the decorative urn, that big giant urn. But that guy was simply filmed and someone else uploaded that online. He yeah. didn't willingly do it, didn't willingly get stuck and posted for clout. You know, it just happened. It's something that happened. Yes, he didn't go on to say something stupid or do something stupid and wait for the response and then double down. Yeah. Yeah. What makes someone the main character online is a willingness to double down. Enter the conversation despite the insurmountable odds of it working out in your favor and then just keep on posting no matter how much negative attention you receive as a result. Yeah. And this video, it, it has it all, folks, and it works out in a way that is so hilarious, it's no wonder his daughter is working as a screenwriter. So much inspiration there. Yeah. Maddie Hart, a comedian and writer, went viral recently over a video where she encourages people on TikTok to share their trauma, but only if it's funny trauma. Not right. trauma, oh no, trauma, ha ha. Yeah, it's, tragedy you know, plus time. Yeah, it's something that you 
you know, presumably had suffered from in life, but it was the result of something so ridiculous that you can only look back and laugh yeah. at the situation. My entire family was murdered by a serial killer, but he was dressed like a clown. So who's to say whether tragedy or comedy? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she shares her funny trauma story, which as she explains is about her father who abandoned her family when they were just kids to pursue a career in professional breakdancing. So incredible stuff already. And the guy was clearly passionate about something. It just wasn't his wife and four kids. Sorry, babe. Sorry, kids. Cool. I just watched Breaking 2, Electric yeah. Boogaloo, and I've found a new passion in life. You only live once. I am a middle-aged man. I only have I, so much time. And I am taking up breakdancing in the, like, early to mid-2000s. Uh, weird, weird timing Perfect for sure. Perfect time to do it. <laughs> uh, but, you it's know. It's going to be coming back in no time. I got to do it. Yeah. So she goes on to talk about he how he got semi-famous for his breakdancing skills. Because, yeah, it's pretty abnormal for a guy in his 60s to be so good at something traditionally done by people in their 20s or younger, considering how much body movement, balance, and strength is involved. He was featured on morning shows, TV, and so on, but was still, allegedly, absent from his children's lives. Maddie seems to have at least acknowledged that as far as abandonment stories go, this one is at least kind of funny because of how ridiculous it turned out. Yeah. The problem is uh, these people actually exist. Uh, with any of these TikTok stories, at least the ones that are real, you know, there's actual people involved. And it wasn't long before, well, we heard from Maddie's breakdancing dad regarding his side of the story. Yeah. Hold on now. Yeah. Breakdancing dad here. To I need to clear the, clear, clear the air. Yeah, clear my name. Yeah. So he posted a video alongside a tweet that says, I wake up at 6 a.m. to find that my daughter has posted a TikTok video trashing me. And yeah, it's kind of a sad story about a guy who got divorced, was at the very least physically located close to his former family, claims to have paid for their education and his ex-wife's alimony as well as child support, and only started breakdancing years after the divorce, not immediately after it, nor did he claim to have left his family specifically to start breakdancing. Yeah, that's how it's pitched, is, yeah. is like, sorry, I'm out of here. I, <laughs> He brings his, like, sheet of cardboard with him. Yeah. Not only is this going to be my new home, it's also where I will display my artistic talents. I'm yeah. taking the boombox and this piece of cardboard, and I'm starting a new life. Bye, family. Mm. That's how it's pitched. But, yeah. yeah. Well, who's, I don't know who to believe. But... Yeah, that's also true. So I thought I'd better watch this video. And frankly, I was pretty chagrined by what I heard, to say the least. But honestly... The more I watch this video, the more I like it. Well, I like about 98% of it. However, I do need to correct a few statements in the video. One day I was living there, the next day I wasn't. And that will look like abandonment to a child. But married couples do get divorced about half the time in America. And I was just living a mile or so down the street in LaGrange, Illinois. We just weren't living under the same roof. Now, about not paying medical bills, that's just not correct. Maddie's mom, my ex-wife, got $2 million at the get-go. Plus, I was paying her $18,000 per month in child support and alimony. I also put $600,000 into the kids' college fund. In all, I paid out about $5 million to my ex-wife to cover costs for her and the kids. And this is in $2,005. It's kind of weird to sit in between two people not talking to each other about difficult times in their lives, but talking at everyone online yeah. about it, like we're some kind of mediator. Yeah, we're Let's hearing let two the people, internet decide. <laughs> yeah, two people have different viewpoints of their entire lives yeah. uh, that are just talking to the viewer. It, it's, it's, it's we a all scene. share too much. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the, true. We, we, we share too much. Mm -hmm. What happened to... Shame and privacy. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, the basic points are all there. He was no longer with his family. He took up breakdancing, got, I guess, pretty good at it for his age, yeah. and is now battling for the truth with his comedy writing daughter on social media. Yeah. And clearly both of them got the clout shark gene. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll this, say that. This runs in the family. Like... His video is embarrassing, but um, I'd say hers is kind of as well. Yeah. Especially if she is uh, maybe bending the truth uh, a little bit. I, I don't know if she's bending the truth because, I mean, this is her lived reality. Depending on how she was raised, like she, 
I don't know because her mom could have told the kids that yeah. their dad abandoned them and that might not exactly be true. They might have just gotten a divorce and she didn't want them seeing him. It, it, yeah, that's it none also, of our business. Like when you're a child and you're like, dad, come to my come to my you know, ballet recital. Like, oh, sorry, I've got a I've got a break in competition that weekend. Yeah. So I'm at you come to my dance recital. Yeah, actually. What makes this and again, none of this is our business. They're sharing. They made sharing it my it. business. Yeah, they're out there sharing it. But uh, what makes this bizarre experience even better is the guy couldn't have picked a worse way to tell his side of the story. There's very little sympathy here, just based on how he presents himself. Uh, he delivers his lines in a way that makes him feel as though he has been deeply wronged by this post. Uh -huh. He's wearing a button-down shirt with the Bitcoin logo all over it. Uh, he picks apart his daughter's video bit by bit, and then, the cherry on top, he decides to bring all of us viewers along for the ride to see whether or not he still got it. Goes down to the Bitcoin gymnasium. Yeah, the altar of Bitcoin. It cuts to a shot of him in his, what I assume is a breakdancing dojo, complete with American flag displayed right next to a much larger flag <laughs> representing Bitcoin. And then he does it. He actually starts breakdancing. Yeah. That guy still got it. I mean, he's doing stuff that I'm like, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that if I spent like a long time working on it. Like that's some hard shit. When he, when he inevitably breaks his hip and then gets a metal hip, he will be unstoppable. Yeah. He's going to be like a uh, breakdancing robot. I want to see how old he can keep on breakdancing. He needs to get, get that uh, Brian Johnson on the phone. Well, I don't know about breakdancing, but I can give you 17 boners in three hours. Yeah. How does that sound? Sounds great, but not relevant to what I'm trying to do. <laughs> nah, you're going to love these boners. They show you how young you are in your sleep. In fact, getting a boner in the middle of a break routine, that, that could be very dangerous. Unless you can spin on that dick. Then, oh, wow. Then you would blow people's minds. Needs to be a, a strong one. They, well, look, what, let's combine all of the loose story ends and have there be a steroid-induced breakdancing competition in the uh, extreme games or whatever, the Peter Thiel games. Would steroids help with breakdancing? Probably. Are there, do they test for steroids at breakdancing competitions? I highly doubt it, but sure, fuck it. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so yeah, again, I don't wanna get further involved in these folks' business. Some of what he said about the divorce and being unable to see his kids is probably true. Maddie herself, has a different but equally justifiable reality of that situation since she lived it and perceived it differently and was living with her mom. You're not going to take anyone's side here and be right. Uh, it does suck that this girl grew up without a father in her life. Um, Fatherless, as uh, they say. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the breaking, break dancing dad might be outright lying. Maddie might be punching up the reality for a bit of comedic presentation, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, we got this guy in his mid to late 60s coming online to argue with his daughter and then breaking out into dance in a room and outfit dedicated to his love of cryptocurrency. It's just an absurd piece of performance art overall. And then Elon came in to yeah. like, tell him how cool he it's is. It's not just the Bitcoin stuff and the breakdancing. This guy might be the first real life example of what a Twitter brained crypto shill Elon lover looks like Post-verification. Yeah. No, it, and that totally scans. This is pretty much what I pictured. I thought they were all bots, but this guy's proven me wrong. Because alongside his love of breakdancing and crypto in his bio, it also indicates that he is an Elon Musk fanboy. Ben Hart is a Bitcoin explainer, freedom maximalist, world's oldest actively competing breakdancer, Elon fan, challenging the narrative. I follow back. Oh shit, we should follow him. So he definitely seems like a libertarian and views age limits on breakdancing as more government oppression. Age is just a number. It's maybe a phrase <laughs> When it comes said. to breakdancing <laughs> or anything else. Age is just a number. Anyways, th this went so viral that Elon Musk himself made an appearance in the replies of his biggest breakdancing fan saying, you are awesome. This is him taking time out of uh, his day uh, where he has been spending plenty of time complaining about uh, migrants voting in elections. Yeah, yeah. These illegal immigrants, they come over here and immediately start voting in elections because that's how that's how it works in this country. You just, uh, no, it's not how it fucking works. God, he's so stupid. We have plenty more Elon to talk about in Tech News Day. I there's hate a, this man. There's a lot going on with him right now. But the the idea that e the, Elon's support of this video reduces any credibility that this guy had on his side. Yeah. So there you go. We have decided. Maddie is correct. Uh, anyways, here's to you, breakdancing Bitcoin dad, the bean dad of 2024 so far. Yeah. yeah. Bitcoin's the new beans.
Yes. Speaking of dancing, though, the breakdancing dad video is clearly a psyop that was deployed to take attention away from the other dancing video that was going viral over the weekend, which featured what appears to be an NYPD officially sanctioned dance squad performing on a local news broadcast while funding for other vital social services have, of course, been reduced or cut in recent months, including the shuttering of public libraries on certain days. Yeah. Mean- but don't worry, we've yeah. got a dance troupe. Uh, but yeah, we're putting that money into dancing, and as you can see, money well spent. <laughs> yeah, so the NYPD, which has a budget larger than the militaries of some countries, has enough money left over to train and deploy a choreographed dance brigade at a moment's notice. Yeah. And, um, yeah, these are clearly New York's finest, folks. Uh, look at these moves. They're, you're gonna, your mind is gonna be blown. Some people would incorrectly compare this to what, like, a Zumba class of elderly women might look like, but no, these are, this is excellence. This is dancing excellence. They should take it a step further and, like, uh, deploy the dance troupe in, like, the subway. Instead yeah. of, like, policing people for, like, Terror, uh, fair evasion. I mean, honestly, they put every time people are like, "We need more cops in the New York subways." You just, it's like forty cops all just playing Dookie be- Dash, bejeweled and Dookie <laughs> Dash on their cell phones. Yeah, not looking up. Uh, yeah, if they were dancing, if they were, yeah, that might honestly, fuck it, try it, yeah. do it. Now, what's especially unique about the NYPD dance video is that everyone in the country seems to hate it. it it's uh, bipartisan. It's not good. Uh, so their reasoning, though, differs on political lines. Most people see this as an egregious waste of money for a department that has a history of abuse and can't be bothered to solve actual crimes despite having an astronomical budget. But a lot of the same people also understand that this can help keep some employees sane and give them something else to think about outside of the horrors of their day-to-day jobs. On the other hand, conservatives are mad about it because it's part of a mental wellness program oh. and it consists of a diverse group of women. Yeah, I can't have that. Yeah, so it's... Where's all the male dancers? <laughs> hey, this is bullshit. Yeah. It's only women dancing. I want to see some men dancing. Yeah. Let's get, some, our... let's get some dudes out on the dance floor. Come on. When I say thunder down under, I mean down under in the subway tournament. I want to see some dudes <laughs> dancing. Get uh, that, get the cardboard out. I want to see some men's on the ground. You say shaking that. Shaking their bodies. You say that and then Bitcoin dad shows up and starts dancing. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I you want to see some real dancing? That's what I'm talking about. This one called. This one's called My Daughter Hates Me. And has a skewed view of our relationship because of her mom. Anyways, here you go. Uh, Here's the reporting from local outlet ABC7. From busting crooks to busting moves. (laughs) A group of NYPD officers are training their badges while walking the beat for rhythm and choreography when off duty. They are the NYPD's dance team. I'm just answering 911 jobs all day, all day, all day out of roll call until it's time to go home, said NYPD dance team vice president Lauren Pagan. <gasps> Pagan. Music is amazing. And when I get to sit here and just listen, even if it's the same song over and over, it's a nice place to be. Everybody here loves to dance. They love being here. Make no mistake, like police work, this is not all fun and games. Mm. It's a commitment with a rigorous schedule. <laughs> they practice two to three times a week for two to three hours. And that's after coming off a grueling shift patrolling the streets. The dance team performs at police versus firefighter games, galas, and even at schools to promote physical and mental health. Oh, they're like the people who rip phone books in half. (laughs) I mean, look, I- Get a load of this! And then they do a routine and like no one claps because it's a fucking high- What school is gonna be like, wow. We're the cool cops. Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. (laughs) Whoop, whoop. <laughs> they, they better Uh-oh. come out for that. Why? Hey, hey, it's the cool cops. They're coming. Meanwhile, whoop, like, whoop. That's I feel the like the police. any normal high school has, like, a dance team who probably would wipe the floor with these yeah, cops. Yeah, but does their dance team have a fucking kill count? Because this one does. They, they, by the way, they, they're only allowed to do this indoors. Because if they're outside and an acorn falls and hits something, oh my God. hundreds dead. Yeah, I am disappointed that none of them are, uh, they're not strapped while they're dancing. Because anything could happen. Yeah, that's they true. They are leaving themselves vulnerable to attack. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, whatever. It, it's good for them. <laughs> um, it is definitely bizarre to see an NYPD dance team on the morning news, but, you know. They got a, they got all that airtime to fill on those morning shows. 
Yeah, wait, someone was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> the New York Police Department has a dance squad? Well, I've got our Monday morning uh, whoop, whoop. That's drive the sound time. Of the <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as far as budgets getting spent on horrific things, I guess this is pretty low on the list of potentially dangerous things. Yeah. That is until someone decides to take the dance team budget and use it to buy one decommissioned military vehicle to keep the streets safe from people selling loose cigarettes or something. Hey, oh, uh, yeah, I know you guys had a lot of fun with your dance squad, but uh, we got this new Humvee. It's got a flamethrower on the roof, so yeah. no we, more dance team. We need it. We need it for the Just rats. Just in case. So we, Eric Adams says we need it to get rid of the rats. We, yeah, it's for the rats. Um, you can dance on your spare time, but not on our dime. Yes. Because we, <laughs> bought, we bought a, a flamethrower truck. Sorry. We bought an F-35. But the good news is, is this gonna this is gonna make everyone's mel- mental wellness much better because yeah. it looks really cool. They should patrol like they should have a dancing patrol. Yeah, where they're like on foot, like walking down the street like John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. We used to have that when the cops were all Irish. They'd be swinging. They that had baton. a little swagger. Yeah, yeah. Cops used to be fun. <laughs> no, they never were. No. No. Nah, They've never been fun. They all, I, especially in this country, originated from slave catching. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> Anyways, finally today, it looks like the Brain Trust that is currently running things over at Warner Brothers and HBO have finally figured out a way to piss off John Oliver and fans of his show last week tonight, which was one of the last shows that was keeping my subscription active before I ultimately canceled it a while back after David Zaslav made one too many stupid decisions. I said, uh, the gif of like having to pull the trigger and tears running down my face. Yeah. So add another stupid reason to the growing list because HBO has decided to restrict last week tonight's social media upload schedule in a way that is meant to grow the oh, HBO Max subscriber base. Shit, no, yeah. Last week tonight would typically make certain sections of their show available on social video platforms like YouTube a few hours after the show aired. But someone high up at Warner's and HBO said, Cut that shit out! We're not giving away that stuff for free! It's a valuable fucking thing. And they have decided to stop John Oliver's show from appearing on social platforms until the following Thursday. Thursday! Which is when most of his stories will have, in some cases, become old news. Here's a statement from John Oliver himself regarding the decision. I know I usually share a link to our main story here on Mondays, but HBO has decided they're going to wait until Thursday to post them to YouTube from now on. I hope they change their mind, but until then, you can see our piece about the Supreme Court on HBO, on Max, and on YouTube in a few days. And here's a bit more info about the decision from Variety. HBO is no longer giving away free next day looks to the popular Last Week Tonight with John Oliver comedy talk show. With the season 11 premiere of the show on February 18th, HBO has ceased sharing the main feature and other segments from Last Week Tonight on the show's YouTube channel the following day. The reason? Warner Brothers Discovery owns network wants people to pay up for Max, which is priced starting at $9.99 per month for the ad-supported plan. An HBO rep confirmed that going forward, clips from Last Week Tonight with John Oliver will not be shared on YouTube until four days after the premiere on HBO and Max. When Last Week Tonight with John Oliver premiered on HBO, the convenience of watching on Max did not exist, so YouTube allowed flexible viewing for the main story as well as promotional exposure. The HBO spokesperson said in a statement emailed to Variety, we are now delaying that availability and hope those fans choose to watch the entire show on Max. I'm going to say that's not going to happen. And people will just, there will be less viewership overall. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also, mean, they were giving away like pretty much the entire episode for free. Yeah. I always were, I wondered about that. I'm like, it's cool, but uh, don't tell David. Well, right, he probably found out down. about it. He's yeah. like, hey, what's a, look, we're running out of ideas. What's our most popular show? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, last week tonight? Uh, yeah, how are we basing that popularity? Oh, it gets millions of views on YouTube, which, by the way, brings us in a lot of money uh, mm-hmm. from advertisements and all that. Oh, wait, we're give, we're doing what? Cut that shit out. No, no. Make them pay. Make them pay. I had actually forgotten that it was just simply called Max. I, I kept referring to it as HBO yeah. Max. I mean, look, this... this is unfortunate, but it's better than the alternative, which I'm sure would have been just, um... Continuing to record new episodes of uh, Last Week Tonight, but then just shelving them mm-hmm. for no reason. Yeah. Just being like, yeah, we recorded another season. It's a tax write-off. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to show it to you. No. Mm-mm. So there's that. A lot of great people worked on it, though, and we're very happy for yeah. all their work, but uh, never going to see it. Sorry, no. everyone. No, no. 
Uh, yeah, no, this sucks, and uh, I think it's a bad decision. I think I think I canceled my max subscription after I finished How To with John Wilson. Mm. Um, I still got a lot of stuff on there I want to watch. I just finished the uh, the Perry Mason reboot mm. from uh, recent years with Jonathan or Matthew Reese. Very good. Got canceled because no one was watching it, but I it's watched, good. I watched three things. Uh, well, two things I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, my local PBS station where I watch Nova and uh, a wonderful series called Lost L.A. Yeah, no, that's a great show. Uh, and also This Old House. Great show. The other thing I watch is Pluto TV for America's Test Kitchen and uh, the Bob Ross painting show. Okay. That's it. Wow. I don't really seek out other stuff. I watched Fargo. That was available on... Uh, I have like a regular TV thing for watching Dodger games. So when there's something on that, I'll hit the DVR. Wow. Like an old man. Wow. You got your... Uh, what, what was the original DVR called? Wasn't it like a, a dog thing or... Ah, fuck. I don't remember. Like Let, Quibi or... It's not Quibi, no, it's not but Quibi. it's like a word like let's that. Let's sit here with everyone and try to figure it out. What the fuck was that shit called? Rue. No. No. It made a funny sound. Like... Boop, boop. Cook, cook. What the fuck was it called? It got bought by like Dish Network, I think, at some point. Yeah. And like nobody else is going to be able to do DVR because we bought the only company that does it. Yeah, and then every case. TiVo? Company. That's it, I think. TiVo. Yeah. 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 We, we all got that I, together. I TiVo'd it. <laughs> oh, he's, this guy's got a TiVo. Ooh. Damn. Oh, are you a Nielsen family too? I'm over here with fucking VHS tapes. Yeah. Living in the past. This guy's got a TiVo. Uh, unfortunately, I have to get like the basic package here in Los Angeles to even watch Dodger games because they're fucking blacked out on every service that isn't the local service. Yeah, without sports, uh, the entire cable industrial complex would finally, finally oh, collapse. Well, don't worry, that's going to get even worse too because yeah. Disney and... Uh, but we just rebuilt it all. From yeah, the a bunch of companies just announced a merger to, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but only for sports, making things even more confusing for everyone in the process. Great. Oh, it, it was Max. It was Max and Disney and Fox or something. It, it look, it's all fucking bad. It's such a, it's such right. a bad business decision to to put a patch on a leaking ship. Anyways, that's it for this video. We do have more tech news coming up, and that has some. Uh, of course, some Elon Musk news. Lots and lots of Elon news. Yeah, there's he's he's up to some weird shit again. Anyways, uh, if you haven't already, we got a weekly, new weekly weird news with uh, Rachel Dolezal teaching and being on OnlyFans. And we also have uh, a news dump episode about a woman getting scammed out of $50,000 in the dumbest way possible. So make sure you like this video. If you like, this, if you like the channel, make sure you're subscribed. Click the join button, but just like the video. And we'll be back soon with more. See you soon. Bye-bye.